As digital technology and DAWs have gotten much, much better at capturing pristine audio, there seems to be a desire from the marketplace for more colored options. And we've been asked for, well, since before the beginning of this company, for you know vintage recreations of, of modules um, you know rupert designed a lot of these things in the early 1970s utilizing the best technology and the best practices that were available to him at the time when we took a look at some of these things um, we found that there would be ways to get all of the characteristics and the tonality and that people were looking for in the vintage designs but also add um, a great deal more flexibility that suited itself to modern production requirements, as well as some features that simply weren't available given the limitations of the early 1970s and the components that were available at that time. This is how we came up with our, our Shelford channel. The Shelford channel is named uh, for Little Shelford, which is the area outside of Cambridge where uh, Rupert started the original factory uh, in the 1970s after they'd outgrown uh, the existing premises that were essentially in his house. The naming of this uh, was meant to tie in to those technologies, uh, including a, a true transformer mic pre, inductor EQ, and diode bridge compressor. These are the hallmarks of design from the modules of that time period. We were able to achieve a much greater dynamic range as well as a much greater headroom um, with our circuitry that, that involved the, the mic pre and the Shelford channel is a true transformer mic pre. It's uh, Rupert's traditional 60B steps with a trim. Uh, we were also able to add a high pass filter um, that wasn't available at the time, which is an extremely musical high pass filter that doesn't mess with uh, the frequencies that are found above it. It's very steep and it's very, very musical. As part of the input circuitry, in addition to mic and line inputs, we've also been able to provide a DI input with a through that is based on our best selling RDI. The inductor EQ is, is kind of a greatest hits of Rupert's uh, most sought after modules and most favored and revered modules in history. Uh, the low end is absolutely huge and amazing. People love it for kick drum, the bottom of a snare, as well as bass and, and carving up electronic instruments, synthesizers, etc. The mid stage is a very familiar EQ to anyone who's used a 1073. It has an additional frequency that, that a number of people have found much more useful for guitars than what's generally available. Uh, the top end is um, a new approach. Um, it's not based on anything vintage particularly, but something we, we felt sounded very musical and very, very open. Um, a lot of the recording that were done at that time uh, were bandwidth limited. Uh, just due to the formats that people were recording to, as well as the self-noise of a lot of uh, the circuitry that signals would go through. So we, we needed something that was a little less closed and a little more open sounding, and I think we've achieved that with the Shelford channel. The compressor is a diode bridge approach. It's a very, very difficult circuit to base a compressor on. Um, it is both cumbersome and elaborate. However, um, there are benefits that can be found. And one of the things that happens, especially uh, on drum tracks, on a diode bridge compressor, it does this magic thing where the drum kit kind of jumps out in the stereo image and you have a much increased depth of field. Um, what we were able to do uh, through a bunch of research and a bunch of, of, of thinking that it'd be done been done on this kind of circuitry is we've come up with something that um, allows a much quicker um, response than what can be found in the vintage ones. We've also added the ability to blend the dynamics um, so you can do what's known as parallel processing uh, where you can squash the drum kit and bring in as much or as little as the affected signal as, as you desire. We also added the silk circuits. So the texture circuit, both silk red and blue, are incorporated in that module. 
Uh, silk red is the same ratio of second and third harmonics that can be found in an 80 series or 10 series uh, vintage module. Uh, silk blue has a higher ratio of third harmonic. It also saturates the transformer earlier, so you get that low end bloom, that really big, rich bigness that sometimes people look for. And finally, the output stage. Um, this is one of the things that, that we are most happy with and most proud of. Um, we are able to, through uh, a second tap on the output transformer, provide a minus six dB output. So you could still drive into the, the transformer, you could still get all the rich harmonics that people get from diming channels, etc. Um, but at a lower operating volume that could be fed into a converter and capture all of that magic that tends to happen.